Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Porch. I'm your host, Robert. All right, TNA No Surrender. Yeah, I know it's from Friday night. But you know what? You gotta watch. We're gonna go ahead and review it. Overall, really good show. Um, there was just a couple things that I'm like, as I'm watching, I was like, based on the stipulation of the world title match and the, the way the world title match actually went, I was kind of, to me, it had a disconnect. Maybe I watched too much GCW and too much AEW, but to me, there was a disconnect there. Uh, but we'll run down that. So first off, we had the countdown to No Surrender. We had two tag team matches, two fairly good tag team matches. Uh, we had the Rascals, Trey Miguel, and Zachary Wentz going up against, kind of love this team, Speedball Mountain, Speedball Mike Bailey, and Trent Seven. Four countdown shows, four pre-shows. To me, these two matches, the other one was the system in Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards taking on Kevin Knight and Kushida, which actually tied into that world title match. So I kind of like how that kind of had the tie-in as well. Rascals, B-Ball, Mike Bailey. Overall, good match. You have the high flying of the Rascals. You have Speedball Mountain, striking ability, and power from Trend 7. You know, the Rascals are actually more dangerous now because it looks like they're running with Steve Macklin. Um, the Rascals were able to get the pinfall victory because Steve Macklin did get involved. And he looked, remember right, he tapped uh, Speedball. So it's going to be a very interesting to see where this goes forward if they add somebody with Speedball in Trend 7, kind of make it a three on three, how that actually goes down. Um, but with help, the Rascals were able to get the victory. I ended up giving it three and a quarter. Um, it was eight, a little over eight minutes long. Then the other um, countdown match was the system Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards, going up against Kevin Knight and Kushida. Their faction partners for the system, Moose, TNA World Heavyweight Champion. For Kevin Knight, Kushida, the Time Splitters, um, one and only Alex Shelley. Um, this match, the system was able to get the victory. Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards, I gave it three and a quarter as well. Um, it was a little, little, little short of nine minutes. Um, both of these matches were kind of that nice little, here's a taste of what's going to happen later kind of deal. Um, now, before we get to the TNA No Surrender show, um, there's a, I won't say rumor exactly what it is, but there's talk of TNA um, filming live events at Full Sail Arena, where NXT used to be, back before NXT got its start. They're wanting to put Impact live. They've been mean, needing to do that for years upon years upon years. Um, I like the idea. Again, I'm for it. I know back in the day when 2010, when Bischoff and Hogan showed up and they tried to go to Monday Night and recreate the Monday Night Wars, they needed to be live on Thursday first. Now, the network they have, Access TV, is not in a lot of homes. If they were able to go to another network, I don't know if they would or not, but maybe one idea would be with TNA Plus. It has the tier already where you get the monthly shows for $9.99 a month. You pay them whatever for the year. You can do the premium package where you get all the pay-per-views, the five big ones, plus the monthly ones for like two nineteen a year. Add a smaller tier or do it free and add, t and add uh, Impact Wrestling. So it, it, it would air live on Thursday night on TNA, TNA Plus. If you're a subscriber, you would get it free. You get down to main and everything. If you're a non-subscriber, 48 hours later, you can watch a on-demand version of the live show. That way, it gets you going to the app for the show. It's not costing you anything unless you want to sign up and watch it live. But then you're able to pull those people in while you're promoting Rebellion, while you're promoting, um, what's the next show? Sacrifice. Maybe you pull those people in to buy them for a month, the $9.99 a month, to get Sacrifice. Maybe you pull those people in, hey, it's $9.99 a month, or 50 bucks for the 
Rebellion pay-per-view. Hmm. Do I want to just sign up and get everything for a year for $219? Okay. And pull people in that way. Just an idea. Uh, but I think streaming, obviously, is where to go with it. That way you can have the overrun if you want. You can language, blood, etc. You don't have a network saying, can or can't do that. Um, now, obviously, they're owned by Anthem Entertainment, who owns Access TV, so they have the ability to do that and just have it on the TNA app. And then you can also even add in some Access other shows on the TNA app as an add-on package or something. But all right, main show started off with a TNA World Title number one contender match. Former TNA World Heavyweight Champion Eric Young going up against former TNA X Division Champion Frankie Kazarian. This match for me was just kind of seen it, been there, done that. It was okay. Um, Eric Young kind of getting a weird kind of victory because it even looked like he even shocked Frankie Kazarian too. Um, but Eric Young getting the victory. So now Eric Young is the new number one contender for the TNA World Title. So either Moose and or Alex Shelley versus Eric Young. I'm sorry, that's not selling Rebellion. That might sell you. That might get sacrificed, but that's not selling Rebellion. My opinion. Eddie Edwards versus Moose sells Rebellion. Next up, we had the best of three series match for the TNA World Tag Team Titles. We had the champion ABC. On, ABC Club, East Boston, Chris Bay going up against the grizzled, the grizzled young veterans, James Drake, and Liverpool's number one, versus, or sorry, Zach Gibson, Liverpool's number one, and then James Drake. So what they've done is they did a best of three series. So the winner of the best of three, whoever wins two out of three, is the TNA World Tag Team Champions. It was tied up at one, coming into No Surrender. Um, ABC Club was able to beat the Grizzly Young Veterans 17 and a half, almost 18 minutes long. I give three and three quarter star. And we have still tag team champions ABC, Ace Austin, and Chris Bay, part of the B -B 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 Bullet Club. Next up, we have PCO versus Khan, two big behemoths just trying to brawl. Unfortunately, almost four minutes in, um, PCO won by disqualification, getting DQ, con getting DQ'd. Oh, I gave it two star. Um, yeah. Uh, next up, we had the TNA Knockouts World Tag Titles on the line. We had champion Decay, Havoc, and Rosemary going up against former champions MK Ultra, Killer Kelly, and Masha Slamovich. I'm typically not for ping tong and titles around. Um, Rosemary and Decay returned at, what was, what was the January show? January 13th. Why do I not know what that show was? Hmm, why do I have it here? They returned at Hard to Kill. Um, Decay did. They were obviously, they were still there, but they just changed back to Decay. Havoc was Jessica with a K because she was sick. And the Rosemary was, what was her character's name? Uh, Courtney Rush. They were the Death Dolls. And then they changed back to Decay, Havoc, and Rosemary at Hard to Kill. They won the titles from MK Ultra, who at that point had held the titles 182 days, which they had beat the, Co the Coven for him, who had beat Death Dolls for him. So it was just like ping, ping, ping. So in the last year, Death Dolls lost the titles February 26th of last year. The Coven won it at 139 days, MK Ultra 182 days. Decay 41, now it's back to MK Ultra. I honestly think that MK Ultra is probably the best team to have them because it makes both women look strong as hell. And they both are two of the top knockouts in a, in a TNA right now. But MK Ultra back to tag titles, I ended up giving that match a three and a quarter. 
Uh, next up, we had Josh Alexander versus Simon Gotch. This match didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, you have Josh Alexander come off of match of the year against Will Ospreay. And you put him up against Simon Gotch, which they told the story about it, which the story makes sense. Seven years ago at Destiny Wrestling in Canada, um, Simon Gotch versus Josh Alexander, the unknown Josh Alexander. Scott Demore saw this match. Knew how good Simon Gotch was. Saw how good Josh Alexander was. Signed him to a TNA contract. Josh became TNA two-time TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Fast forward, Simon Gotch is wanting revenge on Josh Alexander for using him as a stepping stone to his TNA career. And Simon Gotch, yes, was at WWE for a while, but unfortunately was released. Part of the Von Villains with Matthew Ringwald, who is also part of TNA. Um, so we had this match. Honestly, the match was damn good. It's one of the best matches on the card. Um, I didn't realize how good Simon Gotch was. Um, I know how good Josh Alexander is. There was a few times I thought Simon Gotch was winning this. I'm like, what does that do for Josh Alexander coming off that amazing match with Will Ospreay? But going, coming off that amazing match with Will Ospreay, Josh Alexander had an amazing match with Simon Gotch. Three and three-quarter star and... Josh Alexander getting the victory. I'm like, woo, okay, I like it. Uh, where we go from here, I don't know. Um, they actually got kind of personal with this one because Josh wears that head that uh, headgear during his matches. Well, Gotch got it off a little bit, had it around his neck, strangling him with it. Josh was able to rip it completely off and get out of the moves, what what ended up helping him win. Next up, we had a very unique match. I like the concept. I like the gimmick. We had the TNA World Title on the line in a No Surrender Rules match. So what this means is Moose, TNA World Heavyweight Champion, had Alicia Edwards, Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards at ringside with a green towel. Alex Shelley, former TNA World Heavyweight Champion, had Kevin Knight and Kushida, part of the Time Splitters, at ringside with a white towel. So as Moose and Alex Shelley are fighting, if one of the cornermen thought that their person was in danger, they could throw the towel in for. So the only way this match could end was your corner person has to surrender the match in for you, basically. No pinfall, no submission, no DQ. So you had the candlesticks get involved. You had Moose with brass knocks. You had tables get involved. You had Moose spear Alex Shelley through, or through a table. Actually, no, Moose spear himself through a table. You had kendo sticks getting destroyed. You had chairs involved. <gasps> Through all this, 20 minutes of this, no one bled. And as they would do something, as they would break a table, the table got taken out of the ring. The wrestlers, the, the ring, ringside, looked as pristine as it did when the match started to when the match ended. You didn't have the carnage out there, which, I'm sorry, in a match like this, you would expect which did it take away from it? Eh, maybe a little bit. Was I expecting, you know, um, let me think of some of you know, some of the bad bloodbaths we've seen over the years. Um, anything, you know, anything with John Moxley. Um, gosh, Nick Gage level. Um, was I expecting any of that? Kind of the crimson mask, you know, some Stone Cold stuff in the past, Sean stuff in the past. No, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting something. And I never got it. Um, after three spears, I think it was, maybe, I think it was three spears, where Moose speared Alex Shelley like three times because she didn't end up throwing the towel in for Alex Shelley. Now, one of the part of the stipulation also was if one of the corner men got involved and hit the touched the other opponent, they surrendered the match. And then the other person wins. So for example, if Eddie Edwards would have hit Alex Shelley, that means Eddie surrenders the match for Moose and Alex Shelley would have been champion. And vice versa, if Kevin Knight and or Kushida would have hit Moose, they would have surrendered the match and Moose would have retained his title. There was one spot where, um, I want to say Kushida had a kendo stick. No, it was um, Alex Shelley had a kendo stick and Brian Myers... Right when he goes like this, Brian just grabbed the end of it and pulled it. And he did the same thing a couple times, like brass knucks a couple times. Kushida got in the ring at one point, 
Ian was taken out, Eddie Edwards. So it's like they kind of toyed with it. They never actually had somebody do it. I mean, like we had the refs back or anything. I ended up giving it three and a half. Moose retaining his TNA World Heavyweight title. Again, I kind of like the gimmick idea. I just wasn't sure. That it just didn't come off that way to me. Uh, next up, we have the TNA Knockout Title on the Line Champion Jordan Grace versus the more contender Women's Ultimate X winner, the quintessential diva, Jadelle Shaw. Um... It was an okay match. Um, wasn't anything spectacular. Um, Jachelle Shaw, former Rev Pro Women's Champion. So she has held titles before, holding the the Ultimate X and as the lead up to this, attacking Jordan Grace with it. But Jordan Grace's power is just too much for this match. And they, they're still talking about how Jordan Grace was at the Royal Rumble. Um, we're here we are a month later and they're actually still talking about it, which is kind of cool. It helps. TNA, but TNA's talking about it. You don't hear WWE talking about it. So it's kind of like, and they're kind of like, look what we did, look what we did, kind of deal. But Jordan Grace retaining her women's title. I ended up giving it three star. And then our main event, the world tour of Mustafa Ali. Um, and Mustafa We Trust landed in TNA. Um, he is just going everywhere in this world, world tour, and he's collecting belts on his way, so he had a chance at the TNA X Division title here. Going up against nine-time TNA X Division champion and current champion Chris Saban, Mercedes Machine Gun all the way. Overall, fantastic match. Um, Mustafa Ali adding gold to the world tour. Um, I ended up having this as match of the night. I ended up giving this match four star excellent match Chris Saban is one of the best in the world so is Mustafa Ali um, if you actually go to cage match and look at Mustafa Ali you can follow his world tour um, throughout the United States and Europe I believe I think he is going off the over to Europe for a few things can't remember I'm actually going to check out some of the sh other shows that he's been with so he's been with Prestige out in Seattle, he's been with TNA, obviously. Rev Pro, yeah. In the match against Robbie X at high stakes. Um, he's wrestled in Dream Wave. He's wrestled in Defy Progress. Um, nor uh, what's this? Uh, North Shore Pro Wrestling out of Quebec City, Canada. Um, on this world tour of his. So, yeah, it's been pretty... Pretty happy to see where he's gone and some of the matches he's had and the gold he's collecting. Um, so that was TNA No Surrender preview. Um, CT and Robert Sports Show, and tomorrow we'll have GCW's Touch the Sky and Violence and Suffering's Arrival. Happened Friday night in New York City at the Alps Lodge. Um, looks like the main event of that show, Myri, or sorry. Eris and Leo Rush, and then the sub main was my Marina Kira. Um, definitely Sammy Callion's on that card. Andre Everett, or sorry, Andrew Everett and Dante Leon. So we get the giant Andrew Everett. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out tomorrow night as well. We'll review that after watching it tomorrow. Um, that is Robert Sports Show. As always, thanks for watching Robert Sports Show, and don't just have a great day. Have a spooky day. Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader in sports channel content.